I'm trying to learn how to work with through-hole addressable LEDs. This customer has a Honda Accord and wants these addressable through-holes throughout the entire taillight. This is my first time working with them and it's been pretty time consuming. So looking from the front, they look very, very similar to the regular through-hole LEDs. Like this, this is a red through-hole LED that we used on these. You can see that it's got two pins, but the addressable version has four pins. The two pin style, we wire them in packs, put in a resistor and they're done. The through hole has four pins, which is data in, ground, voltage and data out, which is exactly how the adjustable strips work. You got data in over here, data out over here, and then power and ground. The strips already have all that built in and together. These definitely do not. This is how it's completely built out. Green right here is going to be our data. So it's going in and then out and then in and then out all the way across. I have it going down and then all the way across and down, across, down, across. And then the grounds, I just ran them all together at the top. Same with the powers. I bent them down, ran them all the way together. Now, something that I have noticed with these is that they take up a lot of power, much more than the strips do. These suck up so much power that I have to have the power and ground routed differently. Otherwise, this happens. The show mode is technically off. It's supposed to start up here and then run all the way across, but you can see the bottom half is freaking out. That's happening because of two things, I think. One is I don't have enough power injection and two, I don't have enough amps running through. This power supply is only putting out two amps. That's not enough for these. But when I built this one, it did not have the same issue as this. And I think that's because I injected power, jumped from here down to here, same with the grounds. Jumped the ground from there to there and to there. And I did it on this side just to make sure we have even power going through the whole thing. So while I'm still figuring out how to get more power through these lights, I'm gonna show you how I put in the LEDs and try to organize it. Okay, this is everything that I have found to build these lights out. First, obviously you're gonna need the LEDs, the board, soldering iron and solder. Uh, so that's, that's all your basic stuff. Next up is I like to have these two different pocket screwdrivers with the magnets. The magnets are key. Uh, next up is going to be a very thin pair of needle nose pliers and a good pair of uh, little snips. I was using these small ones. I wish that they were sharper, but they stopped cutting through. They're, they're pretty cheap and they got dull really, really fast. You can tell that I've already done two rows, which actually helps because I know which way I need to install the LED. The flat spot on the LED is data in. So we need data in to go next to the data out of the row before it, just like that. And we're gonna fill in the entire row. After I put all the LEDs in, I use a pocket screwdriver to push the LEDs flush with the plastic, as flush as I can get them. There's some of the holes that are uh, a little tight, so if you push too hard, you could crack the plastic. Now that we have that done, I like to start with data. So data is on either side of the LED. I'll put in a picture of the cheat sheet. To start, we'll fold data down on either side like this. Fold those completely flat. And then the quickest way I found to do this is to do about like that so that you can get in and snip it. And the quickest way, to me at least, has been to fold all of them down on this side. Flip it over and fold them all down on this side. Now that you have them all folded over, you are going to take your snips and trim it so that it is as short as this. The goal is to have it just barely jump across there so that you can have a very, very small but organized line. For your 
pocket screwdriver will come in handy is by picking up all the little excess pieces because we do not like a mess around here. The next step is going to be folding all of the snipped data wires down facing towards the other LEDs so that they make a good line. You can see how it really moves quick if they are all snipped at the same time. Make sure they're all touching. Okay, we've got all of the data going the right direction and we're not gonna solder yet. The next step is figuring out the power and ground. So I have it set up so that ground is running across the top. The next one is power voltage. The next one is ground. So what we need to do is aim the ground wire towards this side and then our voltage can fold down like that. We're gonna do that across the entire thing. Voltage is the longer wire, ground is the shorter wire. Now it's time to take the snips and we're gonna trim it. So I'm trying to trim each of the ground wires to be just as long as it needs to be to touch the other grounds. We're gonna do that all the way across. Now we're on voltage. So what we're gonna do is actually fold each of these pins like that, fold it out like that. So for voltage, I like to fold them going this direction and for ground, I like to do it the other direction. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. I just like to do that so that I can keep them all in order. So I'm gonna keep going. I'm just gonna fold this, have it touch all the way down. Now that we have everything trimmed and set in place of where it needs to be is when I will actually start soldering. So we're gonna start soldering right now. There we go, all soldered up. I knew that these taillights would take a very long time. I was not aware of how long it would take. So for example, this set right here, each of these rows are taking about 30 minutes a piece. You can see that there are four rows. That's two whole hours just sitting here installing these LEDs over and over and over again. Between all of these, we have eight hours into the taillights and there's still four more panels to go. That's not including time to open the taillights, to do any paintwork, and to wire them into the factory harness or anything like that. So these are extremely time consuming. I am just hoping that I don't have to do any major modifications to get the boards to fit, which I doubt that there is. The Honda Accord taillights are fairly straightforward. So normally I install all the LEDs and have them completely soldered in and wired up before I actually do any sort of testing, uh, but I wanted to show you. So here we go. All right, let's take, oh. bro, every time. Okay, uh, uh, sorry about that. Let's get back to it. Okay, this is, this is an example of what it's supposed to look like. So this is obviously a different panel than the one we were just working on. This is the star panel. So it's actually gonna have something like that going on whenever it's all said and done. But uh, I've been, but I wanted to show you what it looked like whenever it was actually operating. But if you're looking at this, you can probably also see something happening specifically with this star right here. There's some flickering going on where these two don't actually have that. There are show modes that have some sort of flicker like that. It gives it a pretty cool effect. But in this case, it's actually something going wrong with the lights. What I found is that these need a lot of power and a lot of ground to make sure that they work as well as possible. What I've done on these to make them almost work 100% is run power and ground along the tops and along the bottoms, just trying to get 
even power across all three of these stars. I clearly do not have enough power going to this one yet. So we're gonna have to add a little bit more power injection and that will probably clean itself up. And if you come back over to our original board that we were working on, you can tell that I only have the power and ground on the top here. So we have to add a lot of power and ground going to these as well. So I'll probably do power jumping to each one and ground jumping to each one on either side so that it's nice and even all the way across. Some comments on TikTok and on Instagram that you can add different capacitors and stuff. Uh, I'm trying not to do that yet. That will be more of a last resort. I needed capacitors. I'll tell you about it later in the video, but we just like, got to get through this part because I don't know much about capacitors and I don't know exactly which ones to get to make them uh, the right thing for this build. But speaking of the star pattern that we have here, this is a part of the design that this customer wanted to go with. So I wanted to show you how we did that. And it is, this is kind of a mess. So this board that I'm showing you right now is the first board that we worked with. And this star right here is the very first one that I made. And I'm gonna show you how I just kind of got it done the first time and then I'll show you a cleaned up version over here. Now looking at this, it just looks like a complete unorganized mess, but that's why we reference this paper right here. This was everything. I have been staring at this piece of paper for days now. So here's the rundown of how it works. We got data, blue is the data right here. So data in and then data out going to the other LED, which is data in and then data out. And we have that going along basically what would be the middle of each LED all the way around the outside and all the way around the inside right here as well. That takes care of two of the pins on these addressable LEDs. Next up is the power pin. The power pin I was pushing to the outside for the outside star on all of them. And then for the ground, the ground pin was going right down the middle of each of them. This is not focusing. So power is actually one of the easier ones to follow because it just literally goes all the way around the outside. The ground is where it gets a little confusing because we have the ground going down the middle for the outside star, but for the inside star, I went ahead and pushed the ground to the outside. So it's so that they all run together and we only have one ground wire going to all of them. Now, uh, for the inside star, I made the powers all run to the inside. So it basically all comes down to one point for the inside power. I hope that made sense at all. But one really cool thing is I like how you can tell the, you can see the learning curve here. This is just a mess and this is actually like properly cleaned up. Um, even down to how I ran the power for this first star, like it works, but it is, it is hideous. I had to do it like this because I ran the grounds and datas way too close together in here. Like the ground right cutting through here is just way too close. So I had to run the power up and then into the middle to make sure that it didn't touch anything. I had to go through that so that I could figure out how to make it look nice. Which is why this one looks so much better is because I just, figured out how to make everything flat. Now, the good thing is I haven't completely finished up this board yet, so I can clean up the wiring a lot. You can tell how I ran the, the power wire across the top and the ground wire on the bottom, and then the data going to each one as well. This one is just a massive wire while I was just testing and making sure that I was on the right track. and got this one working 100%. There was quite a bit of wire cleanup I had to do, as you can see in that time lapse. But uh, thankfully after doing all that and flipping a couple of these pins around over here, uh, it works really, really well now. And with both boards sitting side by side, you can really start to get a sense of how this is gonna flow all the way through the taillight. It is unfortunately a two-piece taillight, which I really don't like building these. Obviously we have to have wires coming in to power up this side of the addressable LEDs, but that means we also have to have LEDs coming out here, going out all the way around the trunk, into the body of the car, into this taillight to power these and tell it when to turn on. It's a big pain for me to build out that harness and it's gonna be a big pain for the customer to try and get all that wrapped into the car and make sure that it's all tucked and looks 
OEM. But we're not gonna worry about that right now. We need to continue on with these and get the other side completely built out. And that's where we left off because I ran out of the through hole LEDs. We had to wait a couple weeks for those to come in. Came in, I got everything installed and then we started to wire everything up. I was trying to get one side wired up completely so that I could understand what I needed to do on the other side. While wiring this side up, we had issues with flickering, especially when it was all white. It would either flicker a lot of the LEDs or just shut the Blue Ghost module down. Thankfully, Simply Adjustable and Stop Motion Lighting were DMing me, telling me things I was doing wrong or things that I did not know I needed to do. One of the things that I did not realize that I absolutely had to do was add some capacitors. So, bought some capacitors, added capacitors to every single board, hooked it all up, and it was still giving issues, but it was getting better. So, what I did was I grabbed my fluke meter, set it to voltage, and started testing at the input and going all the way down. And what I found was that it was losing significant amount of voltage all the way across. That was even after I added little jumpers. So you can see here, this top row has voltage all the way going through and it jumps down to the bottom. Same right here, I have them all connected. So it should be even voltage all the way across, but these are taking so much power to power them on, even with the caps in there, that uh, we were having some issues. Then. Stop motion and simply addressable asked, what power am I supplying to it? I showed them this. This is what I've used for everything up until now. We even have two of them. But if you notice right there, it says two amps. That's a problem. We need at least five to run through the whole thing. We need at least five to push through the entire board to get through all the LEDs and it's got to jump across. So it's starting here and jumping across to this one. We need at least five amps. Well, I was done messing around. So I got one that's pushing 15 amps and I'm not using the small tester anymore. Instead of the small power supply, I was using the Jenny here as my power supply. I was just using the battery, but then I remembered that I do have a jump box. So got this thing hooked up to the jump box and it's working a lot better. A couple of other tricks that Stop Motion was letting me know is that instead of having the power go through the Blue Ghost module and then into the lights, have the power go directly to the lights themselves. These do run on five volts, so I obviously can't run straight 12 volts directly into the LEDs. We do have a converter, so we, you, we are using a 12 volt to 5 volt converter that's pushing 15 amps. One thing that I thought was kind of smart was installing the converter inside the taillights and we're using one converter per side so that we're not gonna run low on amperage at all. So what we've learned over the past couple of weeks for these is that you need a lot of amperage. Let's just shoot for 15 amps. You need a lot of power injection. That's where each individual LED is getting its own individual power and its own individual ground and you need the capacitors to help keep the voltage all flowing all the way through. 